Hi guys, I'm Smita and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things machine learning and AI related. We see a lot of videos out there which tell you guys exactly how to learn machine learning and all the steps involved, but we see very little videos out there which actually discuss the problems that you might face or the mistakes that you might encounter when you're learning machine learning. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about exactly that. What are some of the problems that I personally face when I'm learning machine learning and how do I overcome them? So this video is going to be extremely useful for you guys who are planning on learning machine learning or you are already doing so. Let's get into it. So the very first thing to talk about is math. And I know that gives a lot of people who are learning machine learning, it honestly, I think it gives them anxiety. <sighs> And I totally understand because I get so many questions specifically just about the math involved in machine learning, such as, do I even need to learn math for machine learning? Or how important is math really to learn machine learning? And how hard is the math involved for machine learning? Can I actually even learn that? So these are some of the most frequently asked questions just about the math involved in machine learning. So I think we should clear this up. Is the math involved in machine learning hard? Definitely. But so are a lot of things. But do you have to be perfect at statistics, probability, or linear algebra in order to start learning machine learning? Absolutely not. You need to have a basic understanding of these different types of math involved in machine learning. And that is going to give you guys a good foundation when you are actually learning how machine learning algorithms work. So the first mistake to avoid is do not give up over something like math. Do not give up when the math seems too difficult for you because there's so many other things to work around. And this leads me to mistake number two, which is setting up mental roadblocks for yourself. So for example, telling yourself that, okay, I'm going to be perfect at Python programming. I'm going to be perfect at math before I can actually learn machine learning. And that that's just not feasible and you're probably going to give up along the way if you take this approach, simply because it's extremely difficult to be perfect at something like math and Python programming before you actually even learn any machine learning concepts. So do not fall into this mental trap of telling yourself, I have to be perfect at something in order to move to the next level. Simply just do it. Just take a machine learning course, do some machine learning projects. They don't have to be perfect. The whole point is to learn as you go along and work with different projects and different data sets and different machine learning models. The third thing to remember is something called problem framing. So one of the biggest mistakes is not doing problem framing. A lot of machine learning courses don't even talk about problem framing, but it's an extremely huge aspect of a machine learning project. It's an extremely important step as well because what problem framing allows you guys to do is actually identify what type of problem you're actually solving. And from there, what type of data source do you actually need to solve this problem? And what type of machine learning model is best for this type of problem? So problem framing, you could say, kind of lays the foundation for your machine learning project because it actually gives a lot of direction for the project. In an upcoming video, I'm actually going to go through the entire problem framing aspect of machine learning by using a real life example of a machine learning project and how I would do problem framing on it. So definitely subscribe so that you guys will be notified when that video actually gets published. So as I was saying, problem framing is extremely important because it allows you guys to articulate your problem. And when you do that, it helps you to identify what sort of data sources you actually need and which are some of the best data sources to solve this problem. And it also allows you to design the way that your data is structured for your machine learning model and also determine where your data comes from and identify what sort of data is much easier to obtain versus other types of data which isn't. And one of the most important thing that problem framing actually helps you to understand is any type of potential bias which kind of exists which exist in your data or in the way that you have actually articulated your problem. The fourth mistake actually happens with data. So not spending enough time when it comes to data collection and data processing, and also not spending enough time to pick up different data processing techniques. This is actually a pretty big mistake that happens when it comes to machine learning projects and when we're not spending enough time preparing the right type of data and preparing it 
in the best possible way for your machine learning model, that's when you realize that that is actually a huge disadvantage to any type of machine learning model that you plan on building. Since machine learning typically involves finding patterns in data and then making predictions based off of those patterns. So in order for these predictions to be accurate or correct, it's extremely important that you construct and transform your data set in the right possible way. So when you are actually working on machine learning projects, if you're looking to improve your machine learning model and make it more accurate, one of the things which has the most impact is actually improving the quality and size of your data compared to anything else. So even if you're planning on using the latest optimization algorithm or using a much better loss function or even adding more layers to your network and making it a much deeper neural network, The thing which has the most impact out of all of this is actually improving the quality and size of your data. So I've listed some of the most common mistakes that you guys might encounter when you are learning machine learning. Another mistake that I would like to add on involves the actual learning aspect. I think it's extremely important to understand what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So obviously you can learn machine learning in a variety of different ways. It can be self-learned, you can be taking a lot of different courses online, and it can be also through very traditional educational settings like going to university. So all of this is extremely personal and it all depends on what type of goals you have, where you see yourself career-wise, what do you plan on doing with machine learning, etc. So it's also extremely important to understand Is learning machine learning by yourself through courses something you would like to do or or do you actually want to pursue a higher degree in machine learning by taking up a master's or a PhD program? So this is something which is an extremely important decision, which is oftentimes not talked about because a lot of different courses are pushed on to people who are learning machine learning online. But it's also extremely important to realize that there are advantages to both sides whether it's through traditional means or through learning online. So it's extremely important to make that decision. So guys, those were some of the most common mistakes that I've personally faced when I'm learning machine learning and also some problems that you guys might be facing when you are learning machine learning as well. Let me know what you guys thought about this in the comment section below and let me know what type of problems that you guys are facing when you are learning machine learning. Don't forget to leave a like and comment as well as hit subscribe if you like this type of content. You guys can also find me on LinkedIn and Instagram where I'm oftentimes answering common questions when it comes to machine learning and AI. So definitely follow me on those platforms as well. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next video.